posting it, and they're like, what is this guy doing? Sitting here waiting 20 minutes. All right, there we go. All right, so we're not going to, we're going to skip the starting screen, apparently, because I forgot to click it back over, but that's okay. Welcome to tonight's stream, everybody. Appreciate everybody tuning in and watching. Um, I actually have a guest here with us tonight, uh, Dragons. I'm not going to give out his real name or anything like that, but he is going to be on our stream today, so appreciate him being here with us. We're going to be talking about some stuff with Star Trek Fleet Command. Um, now I'm not on my main account. I'm just kind of piddling around here on my level 31 account on server 14 and using this as a kind of a template and a layout for what we're going to be talking about tonight. So I have a, a whole list of different uh, lovely information here to go over with you guys. So if you have any questions or um, anything that you would like to include in the stream, feel free to definitely drop that in the chat. Um, if you're watching from a different platform and you don't have access to the chat, pop over to Twitch um, and that's where that chat is going to be. So um, I appreciate everybody tuning in the chat. That actually helps me out tremendously with my, my viewing audience. So if you can uh, use the chat, then that is awesome. All right. So before I get started with my list here, which is six or seven bullet points here, um, Dragon, do you have anything that you wanted to specifically ask that your alliance had, had wanted to cover? Stella. I want to run armadas the best that I can. And I just I'm not one hundred percent sure about the crew for it. So did you get the new hero pack? Um I have not gotten the new hero pack, yeah. Not yet. Oh, you, you didn't buy that uh twenty dollar one with uh Leslie in it? No, I didn't. See these? Uh, they're still got the twenty dollar pack in here for, for, Hen, Hendorf. <laughs> they should have uh, Les, like four, four people here. Yeah, I, I've still got it in the, still got it in the store. Oh well, it should be over in a couple hours. Isn't it? Uh, eight hours, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like everybody else says when they're streaming, I'm not telling you to buy it. Apparently, I don't have access to the store on my main account. There we go. Okay. My, not my main account. My other account here. But anyway, this is the pack he's talking about, guys. Um, with uh, the Latinum, which is... That's actually pretty crappy for $20. But anyways. Uh, so this fully unlocks, fully unlocks, fully unlocks. And then this one also fully unlocks. And as you guys can see, um, this actually gives you guys enough to actually... looks like level them up a couple times here as well. But these are the different bonuses... Yeah, uh, me personally, I wouldn't use any of these guys. Um, now, if you don't have a lot of rare officers, which actually is one of the points I'm going to cover on here a little later, um, it's one of the things I was asked to cover specifically. Um, if you don't have any like epic or rare officers, then those would be okay to use, I think. And I'll kind of touch back base on them here a little bit more later. But um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely they're not bad, but some of your epic level officers and stuff, the ones that are not broken, because there are some that are actually broken um, and don't work the way they're supposed to. Um, I guess they took away that pack on here for me. Yeah, they did. I love how I don't have it on this one, but I have it on my other account. That's hilarious. Uh, the four ninety nine pack for the, the, the uh, Armada stuff. That's the best pack to buy if you have access to it, but they, some accounts they take it off, some they don't. So it's just kind of wonky. But um, that's the best pack to buy for Latinum because you get 600 Latinum for $5. So if you do like, you know, where the one was just 1800 for uh, $20, if you take 5 times 4 equals 20. Um, so 600 times 4 is actually 2400 
So you actually get more latinum for the same amount of money if you buy the four ninety nine um, or the five the five dollar pack four times. Back on it. Now look, look at each one of their uh, officers. This one? Yeah. Yeah, the, the XP boosts. Yeah, each one of them has their own special XP boost for each hero. Yeah, interceptors. So with Kalan, her captain ability is. And Pikes. And Pikes too. Pike, uh. Yeah. Now, I don't have Pike on my other account. This account, I do have him on. Um, I actually have more rare officers, and not rare, um, epic officers on this account than I do my other one. Um, but the reason why I was talking about Leslie being so OP and broken right now is because these people have already tested him out. People are soloing, like, uh, what is it, epic uh, armadas with the tier 3 and tier 4 Stella. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, they will die because at the end of your round, whatever whole health you have gained, you will lose. But you will still get the hint. There we go. Yeah, Stella just... We'll, we'll, we'll go over that here in a second. Um, <laughs> but first, I did want to go ahead and cover... Because um, the Stella is actually on my list here. Um... First, I did want to cover. Wow, they have totally fobbed that picture up. It is totally messed up. That is not what that's supposed to look like. Um, maxed out on my reputation here with this store. I was trying to find this one. There we go. So. Let's say, there we go. It's like I know I've got the stuff to build the Stella. <laughs> Um, so with the Stella, the Stella, you have to scrap and rebuild this ship very frequently. Um, part of the mission chain, actually, with the uh, the Outlaws was to... Wow, I don't even have enough to build it right now. Was to tear that down and rebuild it. Um, so this is a ship that you're going to have to just disassemble and reassemble here. Um, it's also really good to do the research here for it, because that's going to help you tremendously with being able to... Um, to, to actually stay alive with the Stella. Uh, this is Hull, Hull, <laughs> HP. Uh, so for those of you that are complete noobs to gaming, HP is health points. So Hull health points. Uh, so this just gives basically gives you a little bit more to your, your health. Not really a huge benefit uh, in the grand scheme of things here because the armor for the Stella is kind of crappy. Um, Bonus damage for the Stella. Now, this is the one you really want to do because the bonus damage, the Stella by itself already gets a, a ton of bonus damage towards um, Armadas. Um, let me see here. Just the bonus. There, we'll just click on this here real quick. So, for Eclipse enemies. So, this includes Eclipse Armadas. A lot of people don't realize that, but the Eclipse enemies are Eclipse Armadas. Um, so they're included in that. So, but I mean, it's just important in general to do these researches. I mean, any, any research is really super, <laughs> super important. A lot of people really underestimate the importance of doing just pure, straight, simple research and maxing that out to the best of your ability. You'll notice like pretty much all of my combat on here is all pretty much maxed out. And that actually helps you not only with your ship power level, uh, this actually helps your ship power level very little. So you're, it's, it's minimal boost to your power levels, but it dramatically increases what your ship can and cannot do. Um, I have seen people that have ships that are you know 400,000 less in points and, than another ship, and they go up against them, and they just dem demolish them completely. Um, and it's because they do all their research. The prime research is... I wouldn't waste... $100 on these packs. 
Um, when you get to level 39, or whatever it is that you're, I think it's level 39, that you're able to refine four star, you're going to be able to get these without spending any money. So at lower levels, it may seem, oh, hey, this is a great pack. I get, you know, 100% of my base shield deflection and armor and damage and d dodge to all ships. You know, that's going to be good, I guess, but it's not really going to ultimately matter because most people are not going to buy these packs. I mean, you just don't, you don't get a whole lot out of it. There's less bang for your buck when you buy these packs. Um, just saying. Yeah, it, 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 it's going to diminish over time and not be really relevant. Um, I know it's in here and I'm just like completely missing it. But I'm looking for... That one's good too. This one's really good for station defense. I don't know, they should just call it station weaponry, but it's... <laughs> it's your hideout... Instead of your station now, apparently. But bonus defense, uh, bonus damage for your defense platforms. So when you get this up to level 10 maxed out, you're you're doubling the amount of base damage that your platforms do. Now, um, of course, we all know, those of us that are experienced players, if you're wanting to do, like if you have an event that's increased your power level, like the domination events, the best thing you can do is level up your defense turrets. Uh, those are going to give you more points for those type of events than anything else. Those are also going to dramatically increase your power levels. You'll notice people that go, you know, they're at level 21, 22, um, even 24, that have these really low kind of power levels. It's because they haven't upgraded their turrets. If they max out those turrets at level 24, you'll find that their power level skyrockets um, really quick. Um, so it's important to do those and then really any research that which this is really sad i haven't done any research in territory on this account um, but any research that really targets your station station right here um, these are all going to be super important to maintaining any station defense uh, you'll see this right here station defenses increases your armor deflection all that jazz again level eight gives you 80 percent towards your base so that's going to help your defense platforms be stronger. Um, defense technology. That's not what I was looking for, actually. Um, there, that's what I was looking for. Uh, these right here, these are going to be super good. Set level level 8. Mine's maxed out for all of them across the board. 170% for your shields. Hull, 200%. Weaponry, another 200%. So that's a 400% increase right there if you max out both this one and that other research I just showed you guys a second ago. Um, so huge boosts, huge, you know, huge power level boosts to your station right there with that. So if you're wanting to look at those events to get your power up, that's how you do it right there. Um, I know I kind of skipped over the Stella here, but the Stella is, is going to be a good ship for you guys against Armada specifically. Uh, it's really useless for everything else. Um, except for maybe hostile hunting. Hostile hunting, it's, it's pretty decent if you've got a hostile hunting crew, uh, the best hostile hunting crew you're going to come up with, really, is going to be these three right here, from my experience. Um, you might be able to get a better combination depending upon the officer's levels and what have you. Um, but uh, for those of you that can't see who this is, uh, Moreau, Marlena Moreau, which a lot of people apparently think she's hot. I, I, I don't get that personally, but um, you've got Chen and then Talon. And what uh, Dragon was talking about before was her captain maneuver, which is increases the ship's experience gain by 15%. Um, if you guys do buy the $20 officer pack, um, I would specifically use those officers just against hostiles and just to gain experience. I would not use them PvP. Um, they're just not going to be worth it PvP. Not when you've got um, you know the morale, uh, hull breach, and then burning, um, which we'll go over actually here in just a second. That is the next item on my list. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use those. I would use the, one of the three that I just mentioned there, uh, those type of crews, because those are going to be the best PVP crews that you're going to be able to come up with. Um, the only exception to that is if you're using, um, an opposing crew as a counter, like Khan, for example, against the Enterprise. Um, he does really good against energy mitigation. Um, and if you want to ever beat an Enterprise, Khan's crew is the, well, not Khan's crew specifically, but Khan 
and any other energy mitigating officers are the way to go with the Enterprise. That's the simplest and best way to negate the Enterprise's weaponry completely. Um, but we'll come back to that with officers and stuff later as well. So I've gotten a lot of questions actually both from my alliance and from people in, in the coalition that I'm affiliated with. Um, and other alliances actually outside the coalition as well, surprisingly. Um, people asking what, what the difference is between morale, hull breach, burning, um, if they're really worth it, if they're you know, good to have, things like that. Um, so just to kind of touch base on that. So morale, um, in general, is used to increase the piercing values, um, thereby so the piercing values of your ship, thereby decreasing enemy mitigation, which is how much damage is deflected and blocked, um, things like that. So that's that's what that is mostly for. Now, I find that with morale crews, which is going to be Captain Kirk, for those of you that didn't know that, um, he, so his captain's ability, uh, as long as the ship has morale, he gives all officers a bonus of 60% to their stats. So not only does he give you the morale... But then he also gives you the 60% boost when you have morale. His officer ability is that at the start of each round, he gives you 60% chance of inspiring morale um, to the ship for two rounds. Now, of course, this goes up as you level him up. So as you continue to increase his level, this is going to eventually go up, I think, to 80%, maybe more. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, it's either 80 or 90, something like that. It goes up by 10 each time you, you, you level him. Um, but yeah, so that in and of itself is good. And then you've got Uhura, which when the shield is depleted, Uhura has a 50% chance of delaying the next opponent weapon fire by one round. So that means that that's all of the opponent's weapon fire for a, for an entire turn, if this is successful. So that's really, really good. Cause I mean, that's the difference between your ship dying and your ship surviving another round and being the victor. So really, yeah, that's true. That's correct. Yeah, it is. It is only for one round only, and um, she does have to be captain, which I don't have her as captain. But her officer ability is that she increases the accuracy of the ship by sixty percent, which is phenomenal, especially for an interceptor. Um, so you can use that. Now I've got cross here um, i'm more experimenting with him in this role um, his officer ability is decreases the attack defense and health of all officers on the opponent's bridge i don't know why they say the bridge of the opponent's ship they should just say the opponent's bridge by 30 percent so bridge is going to be your your top deck officers lower deck officers are it's not the bridge so these guys are not affected um mostly for these guys that just have people that have high defense high uh health moderate attack now Otto has got a huge amount of attack that's why I have him there um, again huge defense pretty good health good attack and good health crappy defense but she's got a good boast of these two so that's a good crew um, Sulu Arkady or Arkady however you pronounce him Spock Bones Scotty those are all people that have synergy with Kirk's uh, he, they're all Enterprise crew. Um, Sulu is another one with morale. So that's his captain maneuver. I'm sorry. Um, so actually, to, to it might actually be better to have Sulu, depending upon his level and whatnot, as a captain. Because if you look at this, that's his captain's maneuver. That's a 40% chance of inspiring morale to the ship for one round. So if you combine... Click off this. Get off there. There we go. So if you combine his 40% with his 60%, you get 100%. So that gives you a much higher probability of being able to get the morale going, which will give you the other bonuses that are aforementioned here. Um, Arcady, again... His captain is 50% for three rounds, so he actually probably better than Sulu, actually, because that gives you a higher percentage and for longer. Um, captain Kirk's is only two rounds. So his is, you know, 10% higher, but it's only two rounds, so it's one less round there. 
and his officer ability is kind of blah. Um, don't really care about that. Um, his officer ability is pretty good. While the ship has morale, Spock restores shield health to an amount equal to 50% of the defense of the officers on the ship. Um, so this is good. People think, well, this is only after combat, and that's not accurate. Um, this means that if your shield uh, goes down 50% or more, I guess, technically, um, in combat or otherwise, then he automatically restores the shield equal to 50% of the defense of the officers on the ship. So if, you know, whatever that may be now, I mean, enterprise, I mean, you see the defense here that I've got. I mean, it's 145, 771, uh, 285. And you already saw all these. So you add all that together. So this right here is the number you get 2,205. So 50% of this is what I would get back into my shield as it's being depleted in combat, if I had Spock up here. So, I mean, that's really, that's a really good bonus. You just have to do the math. So if you guys are wanting to run a morale crew, that is my personal suggestion is uh, Kirk, either well, either Uhura or um, Sulu, one of the two. Maybe Arkady instead of her. Um, depends on your levels here and what your power and stuff with them is. And then, of course, and then of course Spock. I think those are probably going to be the best morale crew you can probably run for you know, what you're wanting to do. Now, I could probably get my Saladin a little higher than that with my officers, but I have some of them divvied out on the Mayflower to kind of give it a little bit of a boost. Um, you can see the big power difference between the two. And, you know, they're both Tier 6. So that's the difference between the Mayflower and the Saladin power-wise. I mean, you can even see a huge difference in their, their attack and defense and health. I mean, the Saladin is literally the same tier, same level, and you can see the, the huge difference in the stats. I mean, it's just a phenomenal difference. The Saladin is a really a, it's a, it's a fantastic ship. It's the difference between a level 32 ship and a 28 ship, too. So, not a 32 ship, I'm sorry, a 28 and a 24 ship, I'm sorry, or whatever whatever it is, 26 ship, that's what it is. Um, see, it's been so long since I've been that level that it's hard for me to keep up with it. Um, the other one here is Hull Breach. So Hull Breach um, basically just increases the damage taken by your target. Um, so your critical hits basically are 50% bigger if the enemy has a Hull Breach on their ship. So if you're doing, you know, 100 damage, then you're doing 150 damage. So, but... You know, your officers for your hull breach crew boost your um, your results with the hull breach. Now, hull breach, you want to, and I'm sorry, I meant to say this before, with, with morale, you want to use that on a Federation crew, typically. And you're going to want to usually use that, um, of course, morale is going to be Federation crew, obviously. Um, but you'll want to... You want to use that on an Explorer, actually. It's much, much better on an Explorer than it is anything else. Don't ask me why. That's just the way the Scopely built their game. Um, burning is going to be more on an Interceptor. And Hull Breach, I found, is as weird as it is, is better on a Battleship. Now, some people will say that Burning is better on a Battleship and Hull Breach is better on an Interceptor, but you kind of flip-flop them back and forth. Really, it's whatever you want to run in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely your morale is always going to be your Federation crew. Your hull breach is... Sorry. Your hull breach is always going to be your Klingons. 
and then your burning is going to be your Romulans. Um, like I'm running a whole breach crew on my Bortos. Battleship, Klingons, yeah. Um, and and I and I get what I'm saying here based on the level 32 ships. So your level 30, 34 ships. I'm sorry, level 34 ships are going to be the main big ships that you're going to use. I hate doing this on a computer. It's so much more easier on a phone. Um, there we go. Okay, so you can see, again, Romulan, better for burning. Main ship, interceptor. Morale, explorer. Hull breach. No, I'm sorry, I got that backwards here. Hull breach on, a, on an interceptor. <laughs> Burning on a battleship, and then morale on your Enterprise. So these two can really be flip, flip, flip flopped. Mer morale, you always pretty much want to have that on an Explorer. If I was to put that on my Mayflower, it would be a whole lot more powerful than it is right now, which is six hundred sixteen thousand in the station. Um, but I digress. Um, the burning is a little different here. Burning removes a small portion of the target hull um, hit points at the end of each round. So it's a little bit different. Um, it's an each round kind of thing. Um, hit points removed or equals like 1% of the whole hit points the target had at the start of the fight. So it's kind of, kind of tears up as you, you go along in the fight, I guess, so to speak. Um, so the main difference here is burning and hull. Um, burning and hull breach are effects that are attached to the actual target itself and therefore are shared in a fleet fight. So that includes armadas or station defense. Um, versus morale, which is attached to the ship that actually triggered it, and therefore is not shared. So morale is actually going to be um, something you don't really want to use for um, things like armadas or station defense. Our morale is going to be the best PvP crew you can run, period, hands down. Because the other two are, are they're more designed for extended combat over multiple ships. So... Morale is just, in general, is going to be the best. But not only that, it, the reason why it's the best is because it's Federation. And I personally am not biased. Um, I think the Romulans, or not the Romulans, I'm sorry, they have sucky ships. The Klingons, I think they have pretty cool-looking ships. I love the way the, uh, the Bortos and Brel are designed. The Bird of Prey ships are always my favorite. They've always been my favorite since I was a little kid. Um, but this game is biased and favors... Uh, the Federation more than any other faction that they have. And that's reflected in the fact that they have more missions for the Federation. Um, when they have events, you notice it's not the Klingon or Romulans that you're getting those credits for. Like some of these most recent missions and stuff that you get for some of these events, like the Discovery, for example, um, you're getting Federation credits from that. Even the Sarcophagus, which is a Klingon ship, you got... Federation credits is some of the rewards for some of these missions that they doled out as part of the event. So it's always easier to Federation, no, I'm sorry, reputation farm for the Federation than any other uh, faction. It's also easier to get credits for that than any other faction. So if you're looking for an easy faction to do, Federation is the easiest one to do by far. I do not recommend going with Federation first. And I'll explain more of that here in just a minute. Um, I will say this here because there's a, a notation that I made here. Uh, defense values, which is your armor, shield deflection, and dodge. Um, uh, as well as piercing values, which is your armor piercing, shield piercing, and accuracy. Are all used to determine your damage mitigation. Um, the higher your defense values, the more damage you mitigate. Which just means the more damage you reflect off of you and doesn't really hurt you at all. Um, and you can find the details for that information on um, Star Trek Fleet Command dash toolbox. That's STFC dash toolbox dot dot now dot SH slash mitigation. That's not my website, but uh, that's a that's a tool apparently that I found. So you guys can use that. Um, that's where a lot of this information comes from with that kind of stuff. So if you want to source check me, that's where it's coming from. Um, Do you have anything else here, Dragon, with that before I move on? Uh, there was something I got blood blood. 
There's a lot of information. <laughs> So, since I mentioned it already, I'll just come back to it here real quick. So, the, I said the Federation is the easiest to farm, and it, it really is, because of all the events and stuff that you do. Um, the reason why I say not to do the Federation first is because the way they've got it set up, once uh, you pretty much have to negative out both of the other factions. So, give me a just point pull it up here real quick. So I'm maxed out with Federation. And on this account, I went for the Federation first. But because I did that, I got the Klingons down to negative 2 million, which is where it bottoms out at. It can't go any lower than that. I also got the Romulans at negative 2 million. Now you, you say, well, that's not negative 2 million. Well, that's because I've been working on it for months. Months. It's much, much easier to get your federation down to negative 2 million and rebuild it because they give you more opportunities to get that reputation up than they do the Klingons or the Romulans. So, because at this point to date, I have not had any events. I mean, the battle passes gave you, you know, periodically gave you a little bit for the Romulans and Klingons, but I have not had any major events that we've had where I'm getting... Klingon or Romulan points. I see a lot where I get Federation points. And this is on my other server. So you can't say, okay, well, it's because you went with the Federation. No. On my other server, I went with the Klingons first. And they're almost maxed out. That account is level 28. And it's only like 3 million away from maxing out the Klingon reputation at 10 million. I say maxing it. I mean locking it. Because um, obviously 10 million does not unlock it completely it's not maxed out there is still definitely stuff that I do not have access to all this stuff right here by the way the Hydra is a complete waste of time don't ever get it um, I would love to see this ship I have not seen anybody that has this ship built um, or this one or this one <laughs> so I'd love to see these ships but the uh I mean, I'm sure I know somebody that has them, and I just haven't asked them, but the Hydra is not worth it to build, from what I've been told. So I would not ever recommend getting that. Um, I've been told by some... Doesn't it have a real big cargo space, though? Um, I think it's good for station rating because of its cargo space, but from what I've been told, it's a pain to level up. It has an obscene repair time, like up there with the ISS Jelly. Um and is expensive to repair as well from what i've been told so so they told me it's a waste of time because it's it's a really slow ship as well because it's not really a ship i mean it, you can look at it, it looks like a station like it doesn't even look like a ship um so they were saying that it's really slow and its protection limit isn't really that great to start, but and it's so difficult to level it up that it's not even really worth it. Um, because you want to focus those resources on your warships, like the Enterprise, for example. Um, and other ships, of course, as well. So, but yeah, so, I, that's again, that's why I say that the, the Federation, while they're the easiest, I would not recommend going with them first unless you just have no intentions of doing anything with the Klingon and Romulans, um, which I think is a stupid idea. I think once you get the, the Federation locked at 10 million, you guys, once it's, once it's at 10, I say locked, for those of you that don't have this locked, once you hit 10 million, this will not go any lower. So in other words, you can hit Federation targets and start boosting these two up, without worrying about this going below 10 million. It will literally lock it, and it will not go anywhere. Uh, you'll see mine's a little higher, 
that extra 712,000 right there is just from completing events, the most recent events. This was not like this before. This was ne this was 10 million locked, and I started doing those, some of those events, and look where it's at. So that's my point, is this is all from those events. <laughs> I've been working on the Klingons, like, nonstop. Like, I don't do anything with the Federation. I don't do their missions. I don't do anything with them. Because I'm just not that worried about it. I was trying to get the Enterprise, but I pretty much have stopped playing on this server in favor of Server 52 in order to try and do stuff on that a little differently than I did it on here. Because on this account, I'm actually behind where I should have been because I rushed my station level. Because, you know new player to the game at the time, and yeah. So I just use this account as an example because I've got a lot of ships on here and a lot of officers, so it's easier for me to pull this as an example. Um, but that's, again, that's why I would go with the, the other factions first. Uh, get what ships you want out of their factions so you can get those early on, and then move on to, you know, the next best thing. So, like, I'm doing Klingon... On my other server, I'm doing Klingons, and then I'm doing Federation, and then I'm going to do the Ro the Romulans last, because I think the Romulans have the crappiest ships out of everybody. Their ships are good for hostile hunting, but I don't really see it for PvP too terribly much. Most of the time, you're going to want an Enterprise. Enterprise right now, as far as I'm aware, is still the current best ship for PvP because of the rate of fire and the energy weapons that it utilizes. It does use a um, like a single um, torpedo. Can't, my brain cannot think of what it's actually called right now. Um, photon torpedo. <laughs> I'm a Trekkie and I can't even think of the word. Um, but um, it does have a single photon torpedo. But uh, most of it is all it's all energy weapons. Um, it's really a beautiful ship too. I, I really. I literally started playing this game just so I could get the Enterprise. It is called the $1,000 ship because it's expensive to unlock. And, yeah. And, and you see, again, Explorer, what is its ship ability? Morale. As long as the ship has morale, the U.S. Enterprise heals the shield health by 5%. So Spock is phenomenal on this ship because... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which opens up a whole new crew. Yep. Run, you know, Kirk as your captain for the morale. Then you can run either a burning person or hull breach. You know, you got, you got endless potential. Yeah. With some of these new heroes now. Mm-hmm. I do want to touch on something, and I know this is probably going to skip a little bit around, but uh, talking about, you know, getting that faction rep up, there is also another way to build that faction rep up through your uh, board. Yeah. Mm. Refinery. That's a good point. I wasn't done with it. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on it since I was able to get in real quick. I'm sorry to eat, guys. It's his... Uh... 328 in the morning here and this is actually my dinner from five hours ago and I still haven't eaten it all so I'm gonna be munching a little bit here but um, it keeps me going while I'm streaming that's my uh, energy food but um, sweet and sour sweet and sour chicken it's the bomb um, but anyways yeah so no he, he makes a good point and a lot of people don't take advantage of this and I think that it's really dumb to not take advantage of it I'm gonna show you what he's talking about for those of you that don't know so you want to get the... Well, let me go back here. So this is the ship he's talking about for the Borg. You want to get the Vidar. Now, I know not a lot of people on the newer servers have had this event yet at all. Um, but as soon as the Vidar becomes available, people have asked me, is it a good ship to buy? Is it worth the money? Absolutely. freaking lootly. Um, 100%. Uh, it is worth the $50 that this ship costs. Um, it's really... Not only is it a bad-looking ship... But it's actually based off of, uh, for those of you that have seen the new Kelvin Universe movies, it's actually based off that mining ship, uh, the Narada. Um, although this is definitely not a mining ship. This is, this is a warship to the core. I mean, look at these spikes on it. <laughs> um, 
but it, it's, I like actually looking at it like this. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely a, a very nasty looking ship. Like, I would not want to run into this thing. But it gives you tremendous bonuses. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that is. Okay. 28,750% damage against Borg Hostiles. This ship is the bomb diggity, and it's really the only ship you want to use against Borg Hostiles. This ship right here, 338,000, can take out a, a 2 million Borg ship with no problem. Um, and you can see I've got the hostile hunting crew on there to help mitigate any damage or anything like that from any hostiles with kinetic weapons or anything like that, which is good for Borg ships as well. Um, but the Borg space... <laughs> there it goes. Nope. Yes, it is. Um, you still up for server 52. Server 14 has already had that event, and it's not going to be back for, I think, till July on this server. That's when they might be bringing it back for server 52 as well. They might do it across the... I mean, they usually do events across the board, so that's probably... Oh, it's coming back here in, like, another week or two, I believe. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I know for this server, they just recently had it, like, not that long ago, so... I don't know if they'll bring it back on this one that fast, but they might. Um, yeah, but I, I, I want to say they said it might be the Borg uh, Arc. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Borg. Is, that's where you get the free uh, Borg or the bar. Yeah, you can, get it, you can get it through there, yeah. Um, but anyway, so Borg Space. And I'm just going to click on... Um, <laughs> oh, no. That's what it said. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't do it again. <laughs> that's funny. Um, that's not the one I want to select anyways, so screw you. Um, but yeah, level 28, 29, 30. Let's do, how long of a flight is that? 10 minutes. Oh, dear God. That's a long flight. Um, no, I don't want to move my station. Uh, I had to, I had to fight hard to get it where it's at right now. It was like literally the last spot. Um. <laughs> Wait a second, I gotta, I gotta answer him. Oh, you're in territory. Yeah, I'm in the territory space. Um, yeah. But anyway, so board space. We'll just, we'll just. I'm not gonna send my ship up there because. You can look inside and go around. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. So unlike territories, you actually can see into this space. Oh. Okay. So you can see, well, here's a guy. Although his ship is probably huge. Yeah, so he's got a 722,000, but he's taking out enemies that are, you know, 3.5 mil. And my, my Bortos, or not Bortos, my uh, Vidar can take these guys out as well. Um, pretty easily. His is a little bit more souped up. Um... I'm going to send my ship up here. Oh, I wouldn't send it. That's just me. I don't know. I'm going to send it up here so I can scan these guys' ships and show them. Anybody watching, um, message this guy real quick here. He's gonna be like, what, what? <laughs> um, what is a what is this live stream that you speak of? Um, watch, he's gonna warp out as soon as I get up here, like ten minutes later from now or nine minutes, whatever it is. But the only reason I was saying not to go in there because somebody's in there that went to a different position, maybe got the special ship that you don't want that too. 
well, being up here is going to give me a little bit more. I can fly over those other systems real quick. It's not a problem. And I don't mind using tokens. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. This is not my main server. I don't. I. I very rarely get on this server, so I'm not really that worried about it. Um, but by the way, I have to laugh. That's just a point of uh, pleasure. So you know, FTW is power level. <laughs> That's not even Jedi. That's that's literally that's freaking glitch. There we go. So FTW's power level is only two hundred and sixty nine um, million. Ragnarok's is one billion six hundred twenty four million. No, I doubt it. But yeah, I mean they've got a bunch of people that are level fifty. Like it's not just those two. It's a bunch of people. So some of these guys that are on this um, this um, particular alliance, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars a month. Like literally, there's there was a there was a spree here with these guys where they were spending about four thousand dollars a week. And I don't mean that alliance wide. I mean individually, there were people in their alliance spending four k a week. To boost their accounts to play this game at that level like ridiculous amounts of money so FTW is not more powerful than these guys I guarantee you if they were to go stroke for stroke these guys and, and I say these guys these two right here are both in Ragnarok I think um, no he's a Murd okay but they would they would wipe the floor with with FTW hands down like it's not even a question these guys have been playing the game for a long time I don't know. It's possible, I suppose. Anything's possible. No way to compare it, though. But, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fun times. We won't get to that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... But anyways, um, so when it comes to uh, getting faction reputation uh, credits and stuff like that in the Borg store, while I'm waiting on my ship to get up here. So whenever you destroy Borg ships, you get these inert nanoprobes. And if you get enough, you can convert them into charged nanoprobes. Well, charged nanoprobes can be used for a couple things. One, you can, and we'll get into this one right here in a second. Um, you can use charged nanoprobes to actually get Federation credits, or in faction credits in general, 800 to 95 for my current level. Which actually, this changes as you level up your Vidar, not as you level your account. So as you change your Vidar and increase it in power and whatnot, this will actually change. Um... Federation points, Romulan, Klingon, all them, 15k. Again, these will change as you level up your Vidar. So the higher your Vidar, the more you're going to get out of these. Um, but those are really good for giving you quick boosts in your uh, credits as well as your points for that faction. Now these, the active nanoprobes, these are what you actually use to level up your Borg officers. So I don't think... I do think, but I don't think at this point I have any Borg officers that I need to level. Um, we'll use one of ten as an example here. But yeah, so if I was to level him up right now or promote him, actually, he would need to get some of those active nanoprobes plus whatever else to level him. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm pretty sure I don't have any Borg officers to to level right now. No, I don't. Okay. Oh, which while I'm on this screen, actually, um, P 
people keep asking me, and I've explained this like a hundred times, but I'll re-explain it because people keep asking me, so I haven't included it in a live stream. I may have included the last one. These right here, your badges. People keep asking me what they're for. Oh, why should I buy these, or should I buy them? You should buy them if you have the opportunity to do so. Now, go back here. Until recently, and I say recently as in like the last few months. Um, where's that? There it is. So these badges for these right here. I did not mean to actually do that, but that is that's okay. Um, I should have clicked on it up here. These these minor commendation things, these did not come out until the discovery. So you could not buy these in your store before. <laughs> so the fact that you can now buy them in your store is absolutely phenomenal and is a godsend because you before you had to unlock them through like missions or by events pretty much only, um, which really sucked. Like it was horrible. Um, but now you can get them pretty easily and you can use them to upgrade your officers. Never mind the amount of credits that it takes to upgrade her <laughs> to the next level. Um, but you can actually use these guys, use those to, uh, to upgrade some of your officers. Some of the officers don't require them. Sometimes it's like they have to be a certain level to use them. Case in point with these guys that don't need them, but they actually do need them, just not at the level they're at. The next level is going to, they'll, they'll need them at their next level. Um, yeah, you see this guy, he needs two of them. Joe Quinn, I love him. He is, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal officer. He's so good with his protected cargo. And his data mining is phenomenal too, but we won't go there. Um, what's funny is he actually looks nothing like the original. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Toss or not, but, um, of course these are all Kelvin Universe actors and stuff they used, but... I wish they would have used somebody that looked a little bit more like the original. Um, who, who died, by the way, in the first movie he was in. Um, not the TV show. Because he was in the TV show originally. But I'm talking about the first movie, which was The Wrath of Khan. And uh, he definitely died in that. Um, so did Spock, actually. Spoiler alert! Um, but yeah, so that's what you'll use those command engineering and science badges for is to promote people up. This guy I could actually go ahead and promote, but I don't want to. So if you guys are going to be running a Stella crew, Mud is the way to go. I don't have him unlocked. I don't have her unlocked either on the server. It really stinks. But yeah, Mud is the best way to go. Yeah, see, look at this. When the ship takes damage from an armada target, like, he's already specifically targeted for armadas, um, decreases the weapon damage of that armada target by 10% for this round. Like, for this round, which means it applies multiple rounds. So, anyways, his crew, Mud, and then his crew subsequently attached is a good crew to run for the Stella if you have them. I'm going to touch back base on officers here in, in actually just a minute. I'll just let my Vidar get up here. Where'd that guy go? Look, he warped out. Nope. Where's he at? There he is. I caught him just before he went into an engagement with that enemy. <laughs> Alright. So, tier 4 Vidar. 324,000. That's actually not the same guy. No, this is the guy. I guess he died. Did he seriously just die? No. What the frick? He's not dead. It's because he got into combat. That's what it is. Here we go. Okay. Probably going to lose him in just a second. You freaking stop engaging in combat. <laughs> Let me message him real quick. See if he'll actually listen to me. He might not be. He might not be even reading his messages because he didn't respond to me. 
I'd use this guy, but his is a little lower, and I can't scan him because he's in my alliance. All right, stop moving. Stay still for, like, three minutes. <laughs> Anyways, Tier 7 Vidar, you can see the difference between mine and his. 104, how he went back into combat. God dang it. Anyways, you guys get the point. You're able to see it. You can pause that and go back and look at it if you need to. Um, this guy's is pretty close to that. What is his? His is a tier... Oh, his is tier 8. Okay. Again, big difference between mine and his. Um, but you see his crew is also a board crew. So he's got them guys leveled up pretty good. Um, board crew is really, really good for board ships, obviously, fighting against them. Um... So I definitely recommend using Borg crew if you don't, if you've got them leveled up, if you've got access to them. He's not paying attention to my messages at all. He's still doing what he wants to do. That's fine. Um, but just to show you, even my poor little ship here at only 300,000, let's see how it does against these guys. I think I can take out maybe six of these guys, if I remember correctly. Watch, I'm just going to be epically destroyed. I was horribly wrong. No, see, look at that. Barely did any damage to my ship. Like, at all. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. Nothing to my shield at all. Shield wasn't even touched. Now, I will point out one thing that a lot of people also don't realize while I'm still on this subject. And I know this wasn't really a subject, but since Dragon brought it up. The cargo for Borg Probes. Each ship has a different cargo. So it's important. These are all the same power level. They're all the same level ship. There's nothing different other than their cargo holds. So I definitely, if you're coming up here to get as many of those board nanoprobes as possible, I encourage you to click on their ship and then click on the rewards to check that cargo before you attack a ship. Because there's some here, which I'm trying to find one, so yeah, the first one I clicked had 800, you know, plus 813 right there. That's a glitch ship. 757, 815, 651. So here's one that's in the 600 range. So I mean, that's over 100 less than the that 751 I just clicked on a second ago. So you want to make sure you're you're getting more bang for your ship's buck. Basically, there's one for 845. I'm gonna take that one out. Um, because some of these, like, see, look, eight, 712, that's 100 less than the ship I'm targeting right now. So if you're wanting to get the most of those, take less trips, make your tokens go further, take out these board probes that have the bigger um, inventory than the ones that have the smaller inventory. I'm just going to leave my ship up here. Um, we'll come back to that. So that's what I recommend doing, and then of course once you return to your station, those go into your, um, you know, your total count, and then you can use them to buy these things. And you can see at my Borg's level, which is again tier four, um, and you can see it says right here that this again changes as you tier your Vidar up. Twenty thousand is what I need just to get a to get fifteen hundred of these, and I've got you know forty eight hundred of them right now. So definitely getting as many of those as you can in one run matters significantly. And the higher you go with these levels, um, the more they're going to have in their inventory. So if you go from start at 25 and work your way up until your LiDAR is powerful enough to take out these kind of ships, um, you're going to get more for the highers than you are the lowers typically if you pay attention to what the inventory is. Um, if you're just attacking, like there's one 699, if you're attacking willy-nilly, just destroying all of them that are in sight, you're not going to get as much because you're going to end up destroying your ship before you get the big boys. There's another 671. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so the second point here that I've actually got on my list here, we've covered a couple points that were not on the list, um, is recommended common crews. So, 
the question was brought up as to if you don't have a lot of rare officers, you don't have a lot of epic officers, what kind of crews do you suggest? So I think that's really going to depend on a couple different things. Um, it depends on what ship you're running as well as what you want to do with that ship. So mining ships, obviously, you're going to use your... Well, there we go. You're going to want to use your basic miners if you don't have, um, like, your rares here. So, there we go. So, like, Tapring, Staun, and Barat, or Barret, however you want to pronounce it. Um, these guys are pretty much, if you don't have them, it's because you're doing something wrong. They are super easy to get. They're actually the most common rare officers in your in their, your regular recruit pack, like your common recruit, recruit pack that you get. Um, which you, by the way, as you complete your dailies, you get at least 20 of those a day, which can open one chest, so not to deceive you. You get enough to open at least one chest a day of the, the regular recruit packs, which I'm pulling up here on my other screen. Um, Plus, in a mission, don't you Um, no, um, it gives you, um, we'll just say for all intents and purposes, BPs, uh, blueprints, uh, for them, but I don't think it fully unlocks them. Um, I've never unlocked these guys through, well, you can unlock them through missions, yes. If you do the full sequence of the missions, yes. Um, but if you're just talking about one mission, no, it just gives you the BPs for them. But, um... But yeah, once you do those missions, you should have at least one, if not all of them. Um, but these are, these are literally, if you guys don't have them, you're, again, you're doing something wrong. Because you're either not doing your dailies and not opening your recruit chests, um, or you're just not playing the right missions to get these at the very beginning of the game. Um, these guys are detrimental to your mining. Um, Tapring is, is your gas miner, and she also gives you a boost in your protected cargo by at the level I have her 150%. Um, and every time you level her up, that's the skill that goes up. Not the captain's ability. The officer ability is what goes up. The captain's ability stays the same. Um, Stan is good for ore mining. He's also fantastic to have on your ship for station rating as an officer because he increases the cargo size of your ship by 25%, as you guys can see right there. So he is phenomenal for station rating. If you ever go station rating and do not have him as an officer on your top deck, you're an idiot. Because he's, and, I, and I'm sorry to be rude, but that's, that's just a fact of life. He's the best you can have on your officer deck for that. Um, Barrett, same thing, crystal mining. Um, his is, he's actually defensive when it comes to mining, so he's good to have on your node, or on your, uh, your ship. Uh, for that purpose, 15% decreases the opponent's hull health when attacked. Um, this is really good for the North Star, because if you're North Star, if you're, if you're North Star mining and you're mining really quick, your North Star already has a pretty decent attack and defense, um, because it's actually a battleship disguised as a miner. So having him in there as an officer on the top decks is actually really useful for that. Not to mention he has a really high attack, you'll notice right here, uh, versus his defense and health kind of sucks, which... It's hilarious because his ability is defensive, but whatever. Um, but so these are the, the ones you really want to have. Now, if you're, another another point here I'll make, if you're using the North Star, bear in mind that the North Star increases its mining percentage bonus based on the total health of your officers. So this includes top and lower deck. These three right here, have other than Barrett um, so I guess these two really have pretty good health I mean Barrett's health kind of sucks but actually he's a really low level right now on this this account he's not really that high level none of these guys are um, but they they have really good health and then if you stack with your North Star the below deck health focus on health more than defense which 
is not usually something I recommend, but if you if you do health over defense and just stack your strongest health players on there, there is not a single ship on this entire game that can outmine your North Star. And I proved that, actually. I'm not going to do it tonight because I don't feel like switching all my stuff around again. But um, I actually put that to the test. I put my North Star up against my Horizon and actually clocked it to time and see what was mining faster. And my North Star blew my Horizon away. Um, and I, I think they're the, I think my uh, North Star is actually a tier lower than my Horizon. I might be wrong. No, it's a tier above my Horizon. Yeah, it's a tier above it. But I mean, it it more than blew it away. Like it just like demolished. There's a huge difference, which is funny because if you click on the node, it actually says that it mines slower than the Horizon. But what it is is that. The game does not, and this is really weird, the game does not calculate this bonus as part of the actual mining speed until you're mining. And then it's like an unseen bonus that just pops your ship's mining speed up like crazy. Um, so I definitely recommend if you're going to do quick mining, if you're actually going to monitor your miner, um, if you're just wanting to leave it out as an overnight miner, do not... Please do not use the North Star because you are never going to get any resources. Um, the protection limit on that thing is a joke. As I said, it's a battleship disguised as a miner. And overall, its capacity kind of sucks too. I mean, what? Tier 7? 8,900 is the most without Ston. 8,900 versus 567,000. So this is... The North Star is really good for quick, short burst mining if you're mining for an event or if um, your your station is right next to the node. <laughs> That's, it's really good for that, too. Um, but other than that, your North Star is good for station raids, so you can use it for that to take out like turret defenses and stuff like that because, again, um, it's a minor class, so it's a survey class, which means it's outside that normal little triangle of attacks see so it doesn't get any negatives to attacking any of these three because it's over here nobody cares about it um but yeah so with officers again just touch a back base on that for commons and stuff like that we pull him up again sulu arkady Scotty, those are all going to be good crew to run. If you don't have any of the rare officers, notice I skip bones because again we're talking about you know, commons and uncommons, not uh, not rare or greater. Um, there's not really a whole lot of recommendations I can make for that because a lot of your common officers they just kind of suck. I mean, some of them might have good abilities, but ultimately. It's not always about the abilities as much as it is your stats, depending upon what the ability is. Um, I mean, I'm not going to equip a standard crew on my inter on my, my Enterprise, my Saladin, and put it up against somebody who has a, an, an epic or even just rare crew, or even, even uncommon rare crew. Um, like I've got right here, I've got a... Oh no, I lied. This is totally an epic and rare crew. Never mind. Um... This one right here, yeah. I'm not going to put up a common uh, crew against this crew. He's he's common, uncommon, uncommon. And these guys are, of course, rare, and then he's uncommon. But if I didn't have them on here, I still wouldn't put this crew up against that kind of stuff. Um, it's ultimately just not, it's not a good combination. Um Uh, yeah, Chen is green. Talon is regular. She's she's common. Um, I definitely T Talon is a must-have for for hostile hunting. Um, she's she's right on spot with what she needs to be for hostile hunting. Um, let me see here real quick. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Rarity. Here we go. 
So Helvia, good for mining. Kabish, good for mining. Domitia, good for mining. Um, just to kind of quickly cover, she's a... So uh, Helvia is a Parasteel miner, so you get a bonus for that. And then oop, Gold Rush. So she's... Uh, as long as that's empty, she increases the warp speed by 125 for me. Uh, whatever level she is. She's maxed out for me, obviously. So 125 is the most you'll ever get out of her. And that's really good, actually, especially for really fast miners like... The North Star, for example, which is a really fast flying ship, surprisingly. Um, I would not recommend putting her on a uh, on a Discovery, because, you know, Discovery can teleport anywhere. Um, <laughs> for those people that don't have the Discovery, I'm so sorry. Um, just don't use her on a Discovery, because it, it, yeah. Um, and then, of course... Go on, next person, uh, Kabish. He's another defensive miner, so he's a good he's a good one to have on there uh, with the North Star as well, um, with uh, Barrett if you're defensive mining. Uh, problem with him is uh, his health is not that bad. His health is actually better than Barrett's, uh, which is really kind of sad. Um, then uh, Demisha, who is the Dilithium miner. Which we all know, dilithium is the slowest thing you could possibly mine ever. Uh, so I definitely, if you're mining dilithium, you must have her attached. And of course, um, as long as the cargo of the ship is full, she increases its warp speed by 100%. 100%. Another good one for the, uh, the North Star there, because you fill up your cargo incredibly quick with that. So if you've got, you know, it's speed increase when it's empty, and then speed increase when it's full, you can't really go wrong with that. And again, her health is better than Barrett's. And he's a rare officer, and she is, uh, she's common. <laughs> that's really, that's really sad for him. Um, I wouldn't recommend any of these guys. Um, Tiza is good for Stella. When fighting Eclipse hostiles, including Armadas, Tiza has a 45% chance to increase the shield deflection uh, and armor and dodge by 100% for the whole combat. That's actually really, really, really a good officer. That's a good solid officer ability just right there um, against those type of armadas. And then, of course, his, he's got a captain maneuver for it as well. Um, decreasing uh, for the first three rounds of combat, decreasing the shield mitigation to the opponent by 4%. Um, and that's a hostile or armada targets. So that's, again, really good for uh, a common officer against a uh, that type of armada. Um, same thing with... Uh, Sesha. Now, of course, these guys are really, really low level for me. I have not leveled them up at all because I don't do anything with the Stella hardly. Um, but yeah, for the first three rounds of combat, when fighting Eclipse toss, hostiles or Armada targets with the Eclipse, uh, Sesha increases the critical damage bonus of the ship by 20%. 20% chance to reduce the opponent's critical hit by 15%. All Eclipse stuff, of course. Um... So those are good officers to have for, well, those are common officers again, uh, for um, the uh, Eclipse Armadas. Talon again, recommended. Gala's, bleh. Chev, bleh. Vel. Kamal's another miner. Um, oh, no, he's not. He's a, he's a battleship person. Never mind. Um, if you don't have... I don't know why he's grayed out like that. That's really kind of disturbing. Um, <laughs> oh, why he's grayed out like that. That's really, really weird that he's grayed out. But anyways, um, if you don't have rare or epic crew for a battleship, I recommend Kamal all the way. His captain maneuver, when increasing a when inside a battleship, Kamal increases weapon damage against players. By 20%, fantastic PvP bonus. Uh, I mean, you're talking about like my boar toss on my other server here. I mean, attack is 313,000 right now. Increase that by 20%. I mean, that's a pretty good bonus against a player. Just saying. I mean,. Just do the basic math here. Uh, 
that would be an increase of damage of 62.6 thousand for my Vortos. So he would go from 313,000 to 370 something thousand, 75,000. Yeah. So pretty, pretty big bonus with that. Just saying. Um, of course, that's with a that's with an epic rare crew I have on there. But um, and then of course decreases the damage made by the opponent's kinetic weapons by twenty percent. So again, really, really good common officer for going up against players. That's that's really you can't ask for more in a common officer against a, another player here. Um, Rukor is an explorer specialist, which is really weird for a Klingon. Um, I guess it might be good for the Brill. Um, again, PvP opponents of player increases the damage made by energy weapons of the ship by 15%. Um, and again, inside of Explorer increases the weapon damage against players by 20%. Uh, same thing with Vartuk. Um, and yes, that is actually, I know for a fact how you pronounce that, that is Vartuk. Um, same, it's the same exact bonuses as the other two. It's just for interceptors, basically. Um, Cadet Sulu, fantastic. Cadet Scotty, now a lot of people have asked what he is at at max. He maxes out at 5. So that is the warp distance increase that he does at the maximum is actually 5. I can confirm that. Increases hull health. That's actually a really good ability that a lot of people don't take into uh, account with him. He does increase the hull health by 10% um, as a captain. So I never, I never ever use him as a captain just because there's so many more captains out there that you can actually use that give you better bonuses. But that's still not a bad bonus. I mean, increasing the health like that by ten percent that that's pretty, it's pretty good. But yeah, again, these are all com uncommon officers here that I'm scrolling through right now. So. Anything else that dragon you want to cover? Yeah, I believe you got it. So the next one here is a little bit of a bigger one uh, to specifically cover here. And that's recommended ships to avoid and obtain and then focus on. Um, so I, I see a lot of newer players to the game getting all caught up in these tier one and tier two ships. The only thing I have to say to you people that do that is just stop it. Just, just. In the words of Bob Newhope, just stop it. Um, it's just not a... <laughs> I was watching TV while doing this. Uh, let's see here. Is he still up here? I wonder if he's still up here. Real quick, I'm going on a side tangent here for a second. See if he's still up here or not. Nah, I think he got destroyed, finally. Probably destroyed like 100 or so of these guys before he finally went bankrupt. No. Okay, cool. Um, anyways, so recommended ships to avoid and obtain. So again, for lower level players or new players to the game, you're, you're obviously going to get the real to. That's the first ship you get, duh. Um, you kind of have to gradually progress. As you guys unlock these through research. Um, the jellyfish, you don't. You have to buy that one. I, so here's going to be my thing. If you guys are going to play this game and you're going to stay at level 14, by all means, buy the jellyfish. If you plan on leveling up past 14, don't waste your money because the the Jellyfish is a fantastic ship to have as a 14 because it does max out as better than pretty much any other ship you're going to get at 14. It's going to go higher than the Tala and some of these other ships. But a lot of people make the mistake of spending 20 bucks to buy this ship and thinking, oh, look, I'm hot stuff. You know, I've got this, this cool looking Jellyfish. Well, once you get to level 15 and above, 16, 17, that jellyfish is going to very, very quickly be outclassed. I mean, even me, I'm level 32 with my 
best ship if I switch that to the jelly. Oh, is it, is it more expensive now? Okay. Well, you can see here, hey, it's not quite maxed out. I mean, it's pretty darn close. <laughs> it's, level, it's tier 7. There we go. Oh, no, it is maxed out. Look at that. You can get the jelly for free. Yes, you can. You can get it for free through doing missions. But this is literally a maxed out jelly right here. I literally just maxed it out. <laughs> Didn't even realize. Didn't even realize. But that's okay. Um, so, tier 7. It's maximum tier. This is with my strongest ship's crew. Which, admittedly, I might actually rearrange um, here in a while. But... Um, 108,000 is the best you're going to hope for. I mean, it just, just flat out. Um, which, again, I'm level 32. You're not going to get anywhere near this at level 14. Um, it, it's not going to happen. Um. <laughs> How much did you say? Uh, mine's 108,000 right now. I mean, it's possible, um, technically, if you get your officers high enough. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I seen a dude the other day when I was on my newbie account. Had a jellyfish, level 14, 110,000 power. I'm like, what? I looked at his hero. I am like, oh, my God, yeah, he's got, you know, he's got all epic crew. Yeah, it it just take you a very long time to get up there as fourteen uh, with yeah, with the officers and everything. No fun doing that because like, hey, I'm PVP. Y'all can't even hit me back because I want level fifteen where the real players play at. So the only reason that I haven't scrapped that jellyfish, by the way, for those of you watching, is because whenever they do the lower grade PVP events, which yes, you still get those at the higher levels. I can swap out to my jellyfish and send it over there, and it's pretty much even with people that are higher level than me. Um, and of course, you know, you're able to dec decimate you know, people. Um, okay, yeah, I'll be posting it later too. Okay, cool. So apparently, this guy is going to go watch the video, even though I really didn't get to catch his ship like at all. Um, but that's okay. Cool. Um, yeah, then come back later. Um, but so, I mean, the Tala Envoy, uh, we'll come back to the Botany Bay and the, and the Franklin here in a second. The uh, Kara, the Voklis, the Kumari. Kumari is a good, good ship if you don't have any faction ships. This is a good ship. Um, if you're going Klingon, do not put a lot of resources into the Kumari. And I will come back to that and explain why in more detail in a second, but just don't do it. Um yeah, the the. Ca I mean, you had to build it anyways. Yeah, well, it's it's for research, but yeah. Yeah, but right beside it's Voclis. Yeah, so I'll I'll come back to those here in a second, um, and then the Horizon is the last one you'll actually build with research, and the Horizon is a must-have ship. It, it's absolutely pivotal to have this ship. Um, it starts off with a lower protected cargo capacity than the. Uh, the Envoy, which is really kind of funky, but it does. Um, but once you get it up, it f way outclasses the Envoy, like, in a heartbeat. And I can show you what I'm talking about. Um, oh, look, there's a second Horizon. <laughs> um, there we go, Envoy. Okay, so this is a Tier 7 maxed out Envoy. It is, it's, it's completely maxed out. You cannot push it any higher than this. Um... And you can see its protected cargo is 12k, which is not bad. Um, and its cargo capa capacity overall is 144k. Now this will obviously increase if I have the right crew on here to do that with, which actually I can do that for you guys. Um, 
me go in here real quick, swap this out. Okay, so we're going to swap this over. So this is what it is right now. So this is the tier 6 um, Horizon. Its cargo capacity is 567,000 with the current crew. That includes Ston. And then protected is 33k. So if I switch that to my Envoy, you can see a dramatic difference. 68% uh, lower on the cargo capacity, 16% lower on protected cargo, which is really not that much. And then the mining bonus is even lower too, 42% lower. So definitely the maxed out Envoy has nothing on my not even close to being maxed out Horizon. And then, oh, we're not even going to mention the Antares. Um, that's what I was looking for, the North Star. And even the North Star, you know, this claims that it has a lesser mining bonus at 11%, but that's, again, not taking into account the officer crew that I have on my uh, Horizon right now. So this would actually mine faster than my Horizon would because of that crew. Um, but I like the horizon because I don't like to sit there and monitor and micromanage my miners. I like to just let them sit there and mine, and I'll set a timer and an alarm for how long it takes me to fill up my protected cargo, and then I warp out because that's the smart way to do it, um, or leave it overnight. But if I do overnight mining, I do recommend the horizon or the the envoy over the horizon, and the reason why is because the envoy has a significantly lower repair time than the horizon. So if you're going to be doing overnight mining, just to do overnight mining to get like your daily or something like that I would definitely recommend using the horizon because not the horizon the envoy because it doesn't really matter if you lose that cargo if somebody comes in and hits you it, ultimately it doesn't matter you're still getting 12,000 of it at minimum and not only that but um, you, you still finish the daily for your mining and stuff regardless whether you keep it or not you're still finishing the daily so you st still get the bonus whether you, you know, don't keep it or not. It doesn't really matter. Um, the Kera, to touch back base on that, uh, and really any of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 ships, uh, don't upgrade those, don't waste your resources. The Kera is a good um, starting ship, again, if you're staying at level 14. Um, but I don't... Do I have enough to build this thing yet? Um, I don't typically, no, I don't. God bless. Still need another 220,000. Um, but I, I don't recommend, oops, went back too far. Don't recommend investing too much into the Kara. Um, you can save the resources for this. Um, I mean, it's an interceptor. So if you're, so... <laughs> This is what I was going to mention with the uh, the Kamari. So with these three ships here, um, the Vaklas, the Kamari, and the Kara, um, you'll see Interceptor, uh, Explorer, and then Battleship. So depending upon what faction you go with, if you go with the Federation, um, you especially do not want to do anything with the Kara because it's going to use your interceptor parts um, as well as tier 3 or G3 resources for your interceptor which is going to hurt you ultimately whenever you get up to where you can unlock the Saladin um, and these ships you're going to end up scrapping them I mean you're, you're really you're going to um, once you get your first faction ship and you start getting it built up and then you start getting your other faction ships as you continue to level you're ultimately going to dump these ships. You're not going to use them. Um, but the problem is, is you're not going to get even a quarter of the resources that you put into upgrading these and tearing them up, maxing it out. You're not going to get hardly any of that back. I mean, you'll get a good chunk of it back, but I'd say it's maybe maybe 20%, if that, um, of what you put into it. Um, it's really, in the grand scheme of things, it is not worth it. This is a glorified lawnmower. This ship right here is a lawnmower. Um, the Voclis is a, is a pretty decent ship, but again, if you're going Federation, guess what? Your first faction ship of the Federation is a Mayflower, which, guess what, is an Explorer. 
So all of your resources that you're dumping into this Voclis, you can put into your first faction ship as a, as Federation, which is that, again, the Explorer, which is the Mayflower. And same thing with the Kara. I mean, your first Klingon ship is going to be an Interceptor, level 28. No, that's not right. 26. Level 26. Your first ship is going to be the D3. And it's an interceptor, so it's going to use all the parts that you're using for the Kara. So if you waste all those parts upgrading your Kara, then guess what? You have nothing left for your D3, and it takes you twice as long to, to do anything with it. Um, same thing for the, the Kamari. Um, your first uh, Romulan ship is a battleship, um, Legionary, level 26. If you use all your parts... And guess what? You don't have enough to upgrade it. Same thing with the Klingons at level 28. If you go for the Bortos, guess what? All of your battleship parts and everything just went to your Kamari, which granted is a good ship, but has nothing on the, the Bortos. Absolutely nothing on it. Um, I mean, it's just... You see, look at the Kamari right now. This is base build, no officer bonuses, no station bonuses. This is 115,000 first build. Level 1, Tier 1, all that jazz. Bortos, literally more than two times the strength. So you see a big difference with these other ships, and that's a faction ship, of course, with the Klingons. So it's just not worth it to upgrade these ships too much. I mean, a couple levels here and there to keep you in the run is fine. Um, maybe two tiers at most, I'd say. I wouldn't do anything beyond that unless you're not planning on getting any higher to get the faction ships. If you're going to stay at a lower level, by all means. Here's what I did. I skipped the uh, first round of faction ships. I believe I leveled up the Kamari. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I was going to go with the Saladin. The Kamari got me all the way up to the Saladin. I believe that's the last ship I had. Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're going Federation, by all means, build up the Kamari because the only battleship you get with the Federation initially is going to be the um, Intrepid. And to be honest with you guys, the Intrepid is just simply not worth it. I'll, I'll actually, I'll be getting up to that ship here in a minute to give you a little bit more information on it, but it's really not worth it to build it. Um, so I, I, I recommend skipping that ship, actually, in the grand scheme of things. Um, your... Botany or your Franklin to touch base on that real quick here. So the Franklin is a good ship for hunting swarms. Um, it actually even says in the ship details, this is an outdated ship. It literally says that. Most decorated ships, despite having disappeared over a hundred years ago, a hundred years ago. So this is a hundred year old ship. So while it's still somehow in service after a hundred years and is really dirty looking, it's really not good against anything other than swarms. And that's only because it gets the increase of 4,800% uh, for damage against swarm ships. So phenomenal ship against swarms, especially when you do the research for it, which you can find in the galaxy tier in your uh, research uh system here see swarm weak points swarm targeting swarm jamming swarm fortification all these are really good see it increases that damage bonus that you get increases accuracy so on and so forth my Franklin on this server I haven't really come on have worked on too terribly much. Um, it is a pain in the butt to build up the Franklin, in my opinion. It's it's too much trouble unless you're like doing swarms like all day, every day. Um, it just I didn't even realize I had stuff to level it up. But you see, it uses resources that I don't want to use. Um, as you kill swarms, you get frequency modulators. That's a lot of what you use to upgrade this ship. The reason I'm not using it right now as well is because I told you I was trying to get the Enterprise. And look what it uses. Tier 3 inter 
or explorer parts. What is the Enterprise? An explorer. Oh, I don't want to use these because I don't want to waste it on this ship that I don't really use that much. But, I mean, it's not a bad ship again. I mean, it's... I mean, look at this. It's tier 4, level 18. It only does 10k damage. That's absolutely... And that's on my strongest crew for my biggest ship. That's pathetic. I think my Horizon does more damage than that thing. My North Star certainly does. I mean, yeah, look, my, my mining ship does more damage than, than the Franklin. <laughs> I don't think I have any ships that do that little damage. Oh, no, look, the, the Envoy is slightly lower. Like, that's really embarrassing that the Envoy... Of course, the Devor is going to be a lot lower, but... Like, even my, my Turos is 3,000. I mean, it's... But you guys get the point. That The Franklin is just not a good ship for anything other than Swarms. So if you buy it... you should. Well, let me just put it this way. You should not buy it, un or, or even work on trying to upgrade it at all if you get it for free through the quests, because you can, you can get them through missions. It's really hard, and it takes a while, but you can. Um... But I really, if you're not doing swarms, and you're not focused on doing swarms, and you don't really care about swarms, I wouldn't waste your time or money trying to get that ship and build it up. It, it's really just not worth it. And ultimately, the only benefit you'd get from doing swarms is just getting these. Um, the swarm binobials which you only get these through completing your dailies. And I'll show you guys in a minute what I'm talking about. But you use one chest and you can get, you know, 100k Tritanium tokens. This is a good way to get these. But, again, you have to do your swarm dailies to do that. Oops, that's not the right button. That one. So this is what I'm talking about, for those of you that don't know. Um, right here, your swarm guard dailies. So you get these binomials from that. Biominerals, I'm sorry. It's biominerals, not binomials. Binomials is math class. We're not doing math here. Um, now, I will say this. That these are really nice to have. They're a pair of speed-ups. So, the only reason that I would even do these dailies is just to simply get these repair speed-ups. Not gonna lie. Um, I mean, yeah. But yeah, the binomials... Do what? Oh yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so that that's I, I, the Franklin is definitely you can get that if you're going to be doing swarms. If you're not going to do swarms, if you don't have any interest in that, I I would not waste your time. You can level up ships to do swarms without using the Franklin. Um, I mean, it, they're just like any other ship that they do get a little bit more powerful the higher level you go with them but again if you've got a, a good faction ship blow swarms away all day with that of almost any level once you get the faction ships leveled up a little bit more um it's just yeah that's that's pretty much all there is to say about it the botany bay um again you can get by doing missions or you can buy it if you want to buy it or if you want to use event points to buy it um, I actually have two of them on my other account, um, and I really enjoy the Botany Bay. I think the Botany Bay is 100% worth it. Um, data is really good to mine, and of course the Botany Bay is the best ship to mine it with, as you just may have seen, 26.5,000%. Uh, um, so that's really good. And, of course, if you put Joe Quinn on here as the uh, captain, then that's an even bigger bonus. What's interesting about this ship is it actually looks like a submarine, if you didn't notice. I mean, it legit looks like this This first half of it is basically a submarine. Now, for those of you that have seen the original series, this ship is actually in the original series. And uh, it's also mentioned in... Um, the Wrath of Khan movie when Chekhov and 
whatever that captain's name is. Nobody remembers him. He shot himself and killed himself. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, they actually mentioned the Botany Bay in that a couple times. And that is Khan's ship. Um, again, really old, really ancient ship. Uh, late 20th century. Um, intended, to be, intended to be humanity's foray into deep space exploration. This ship does not have the warp range for deep space exploration. Just want to point that out. My Botany Bay on my account here is pretty souped up. Um, yeah, I want you leveled up. I mean, Warp Range 32 on, my, on this account. Well, yeah, I, I was thinking there might have been something we can research now for. Of course, this is a Tier 8 ship, too, so, I mean, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I... I might be thinking of Warp Speed. Yeah, I think you're thinking of Warp Technology, which is the Warp Speed, um... I don't think they did anything specific with the data other than data mining right here, which increases the rate of data mining. Um, I feel like they did something else here, but I'm not seeing it in here. Since I did actually find this here, um, I do want to point out um, if you guys get these, when you get up to that, that level where these are available right here, use them. Because this decreases the requirement for what you need to upgrade like things like the Saladin, um, you know, the Enterprise, or those bigger ships here that you're seeing. Like, you know, oh god, I have to spend 1800 uncommon, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is. This will significantly decrease that burden. Um, like getting these, like you max this out level 10, it's a 15% decrease in what you need to actually build something or upgrade something. That's really, really hefty. Um, especially when you're getting up into the tier 6 and tier 7 and tier 8 levels. You know, you start getting these massive requirements to, to put stuff together. Um, that's going to be really pivotal to, to doing that. Tier up boost I also recommend doing for station research because that's actually going to help you with uh, speeding up the tearing up of your ships because some of these ships I know you know, are 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Some of them are 30 days to upgrade and tear up a ship um, as you get them higher up in the levels and stuff. And that's just, it, it becomes long periods of time if you don't have certain upgrades and stuff done. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything here for the... Uh, the increase in warp for that ship specifically. Your outlaw mechanics, I don't know, that's not what I'm thinking of. Um, lightweight engines increases your warp speed for empty ships. Um, data storage right here increases the protected cargo for the body bay. Um, augmented shields for the body bay, augmented hull, but uh, augmented impulse, and here's augmented warp right here. Um, but that's warp speed, not warp range. Yeah, it's just warp speed. But, yeah, so Botany Bay, I definitely recommend getting. Um, Augment um, is really good. I mean, you see, I've got it maxed out completely. It cannot go any higher. It's it's completely maxed out. Um, and the reason I say this is because, one, if you choose to skip the um, level 26 ships for the faction ships, the first tier of faction ships, you can literally get each version of the 26 level 26 ships through the faction store for the augments and it's it's easier to get this than it is to get them through the the actual factions um, it's quicker because you can go and mine data like super super fast um, as as dragon already pointed out his is what well, you said 900,000 yeah almost a million yeah so it's almost a million per hour for him it's pretty close to that for me as well um, if not at that with my tier 8 Botany Bay. I haven't looked recently. It probably is. In fact, I'm, I'm actually curious now. Um, my crew's actually bad. My Botany Bay, if I actually had leveled up crews, but because I rushed to do what I did, uh, my crews are suffering. 
Oops, we don't need that up. Get out of the way. Away with you. Okay. Alright, so let's... I'm actually just going to test this and see. I can... Yes, and Khan, and, well, actually, not just Khan, but his crew is a station-cracking crew. And I'll show you guys some of their stats here in a second. But they are phenomenal at station-cracking. Um, yeah, so, so, and I don't have any of the research done for the Botany Bay mining, by the way. Um, so the Botany Bay in this particular area is 859,000 per hour. So it takes 16 seconds to fill my cargo up here. So, I mean... The amount of time it takes me to fill up and then refine my stuff with my other stuff, it's really just not worth it. I mean, actually, I kind of want to, I know, I don't want to sit here and wash my miners, never mind. Um, but yeah, so you can see, you know, you have to, that's not what I was looking at, actually. That's what I was looking for. So once you build up, if this catch up, this right here. Uh, which is really what you want to mine. You don't really once you once you can reach the green, you don't want to do the red anymore. The corrupted data, but the decoded data is what you really want to get to, and you can use it to purchase the augment credits, which is what you need to get these unlocked. You can also use it to purchase reputation, which I can't anymore, obviously, because my reputation is locked. Um, but yeah, once you get these, you can start. You know, once you start getting the reputation, you can start working on unlocking these. And then you don't have to worry about trying to save up the blueprints. You can save those blueprints for bigger ships with the faction store. Um, and these use similar resources to your faction ships to upgrade, but then they also use plutonium as well. So again, plutonium is pretty easy to obtain through the augment store here. Um, and then, of course, the augment recruits, which I am almost I almost have con unlocked. Um, Katie... Uh, Captain Maneuver is 4% critical hit chances against defense platforms and 30% uh, critical damage in station combat, which is really good. Um, auto, 20% damage to defense platforms as Captain Maneuver, plus 50% attack to every officer on the bridge of the ship. That is phenomenal. 50% attack. That's, yeah, that's great. Um, Joe Quinn, we already know. Um, Marla is is really good if you're using a ship that has high repair times. Um, and again, give 60% to this uh, ship's captain status. I will say the one thing with her is that her... She's good if you have a really good captain. Um, but she is the captain for her 20% repair speed. So just bear that in mind, that if you're using her... Um, if you're one of that 20% repair speed, you're going to have Travers to have her as a captain. And it's actually, it, it's really stupid that her ability is set up like that because plus 60% to a 20% isn't really benefiting you that much. <laughs> um, and she doesn't really have any other benefits as an officer, really, other than benefiting the captain. So I don't really use her for anything. Um, Joe, Joe, I can't even say his name right. So this is Joe Quinn, and this is Joe Chim. I think they're supposed to be twins, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, uh, his captain ability is 50% chance to drastically increase the ship's mitigation against the station for one round. That's pretty good, blocking all dam blocking 50% of damage from a station for one round. Um, again, that can make a difference between dying and not dying. And then, if, of course, 15, minus 15% 15 to all opponent ships and defense platforms da uh, damage and station combat. That That's really good. Um, I mean, you think about 15% damage from one ship is really good, but or is moderate, I should say. Um, but 15% to all ships and defense platforms, you put them, if he's leveled up and everything and tiered up and whatnot, which he's not for me, um, and you put him up against a station that has four ships in it and all this, the turrets and stuff at full health, that is phenomenal. Uh, once you add that up, it stacks pretty well. Khan, um, he's really, really, really good against the Enterprise. Um, 
50% chances to drastically reduce the opponent's station and ship's mitigation for two rounds. And then 1% uh, critical chances every time the ship gets hit. Now, actually, I'm sorry, it's not Khan. It's Harrison that's good against the Enterprise. Khan Union Singh is good against stations. And just for giggles. Never worry about not having enough officer XP because you're going to always end up with more officer XP than you need. I have 6.5 million and I have officers I can't even level up. So don't worry about officers. Um, let's see. North Star... I pretty much have already talked about the North Star. If you enjoy quick mining and monitoring your mine constantly, go with the North Star. Um, if you want it as a good as a as a easy quick station cracker at low levels, North Star is good for that. Higher levels, not so much. Um, a North Star is just not going to do much against a Bortos or um, you know some of these higher tier faction ships and whatnot. It's going to get just blown to bits. It's not even going to scratch the surface. Um, I've had people try and, I don't know why, but I've had people try and kill my Bortoss with a North Star, and it does not go well for them, ever. I mean, I've seen people with 400,000 North Stars that have gone up against my Bortoss and not even left a scratch on it. And that was before I got it up in levels. Like, it was, like, equal and par and not even scratch. But anyways, uh, the Devor, uh, definitely worth the money, 100% of the way. Um, especially for lap Mondays, that was just what we call it. Uh, it's where they have the every Monday they got a lap mining event. The Devor is phenomenal for mining lap. You get twelve thousand percent bonus for mining law mat rat, latinum. Unfortunately, there is not a crew for this. Um, they do not have a Ferengi crew, which we're really hoping that now that they've merged. Um, or they're, they're bringing in, I should say, the other um, um, dimensions, other dimensions, other servers, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, whatever you said, Dragon. Uh, they're bringing in the other stories and stuff, uh, the other universe. That's what I was looking for, the other universe. They're bringing in the other universes, so DS9, TNG, all those, Voyager. Um, and they're, the Fringy were in that. So they were not in the Kelvin universe, which is why they didn't have it. The Devor was brought in from the original universe, but they never brought in a crew for it. So we're really hoping that we're going to get a Ferengi crew to actually equip onto the Devor, which would make perfect sense since it's a Ferengi Devor, um, which would hopefully bring bonuses to mining Latinum and, and things of that nature. But definitely a must-have ship. Um, you can take raw latinum that you mine and you can actually turn it into actual in-game currency latinum for free so the ship more than pays for itself um and the, these little devour parts here which they're not showing the picture of is actually how you uh, level up not level up i'm sorry uh, how you can build the additions for the devour so You can through a couple different means. Um, you can get it for free through events. You can also get it for free by saving up your daily tokens. That's not what I was looking for. It's under gifts. And doing the 30 day chest. But you only get 10 of these a piece. So, I mean, you have to do it. It takes a year. Yeah, it takes a full year. <laughs> to get to get it, Carol Danvers or Marcus. I mean, Carol Danvers. Wow, Carol Marcus. Well, it also depends on what events they have. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know why I said Carol Danvers. That I must be tired. Um, Carol Marcus in the Kelvin universe. She's really good against defending. Um, forty negative forty to opponent damage when defending in battle, and then plus uh, twenty percent damage dealt. She's She's really good if you're defending in a station raid. Um, if you're putting your, your leaving your station open, you know, put some of your stronger ships on there, make her a captain. 
she is really, really, really useful for that. Um, or if you're defending an ally's station um, during a station raid, you know, wow, I just put that way too high. Um, you know, you can use her as a way to help defend because people are going to be attacking you more than likely. So that's a good way for you to uh, be able to defend yourself. Look, here's a salad in 1.5 mil. Ooh. I don't want to go mess with them, though, because they will probably kill me on sight. Um, you mean max tier 9? You said tier 1. That's not tier 1. <laughs> uh, if that was tier 1, I would be... I'd be pretty frightened because mine's a tier six, and it's not even not even close to that. Um, <laughs> though I don't want to, I don't even want to know. Um, I can probably warp my discovery in there and see what. Actually, I don't think I can actually because my discovery on this server, I didn't do anything with it. It's still literally level five. <laughs> I don't. Oh no, I can reach. Okay. Well, cool. I just kind of want to do this just to see what his uh, shift looks like. Just for giggles here real quick. See if he attacks me. He probably will. UST does not like my alliance on this. So yeah, tier 9. Um, and you see what crew he's running. He's running Pike, Chen, and then Moreau, which is actually, that's a hostile hunting crew, so I'm really surprised he's running that. Um, but yeah, I mean, attack. Yeah, it is absolutely correct. I'm going to recall before I get destroyed because I really don't feel like repairing this ship. Um, don't go. I mean, he starts an armada and then says, don't go. Okay, whatever, dude. I'm not going to the Armada anyway, so don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so the Dvor, great ship to buy. Um, or build, if you just want to save up and build it. It's definitely, you got to have it for Lap Mondays to be successful and actually be able to participate in that without completely failing. Discovery, the only good thing about the Discovery is when you reach, what, level 32, Dragon? 31. 31. You can summon other ships... Once you research it in your research tier chain, um, which is a pain in the butt to get to, um, you can summon other ships anywhere, which is really extremely useful, especially if you've got like a short range uh, Devor, for example, that can't reach certain areas of space. Um, do you know, Dragon, if you can send the Discovery into um, like areas of space where you need tokens to get into and then summon other ships into that token space without using a token? Still cost the token. So sorry guys, you're just SOL with that one. Um, but at the same time, if you're spending an extra token, getting in there in four seconds versus waiting 15 minutes, depending on where your station is. Yeah, it's really up to that person. Um, the Vidar, moving forward here, because that's really the only thing that's good about the Discovery. Um, It's true. Hopefully nobody goes against ROE and kill your ship. So every day when you get your two tokens, you say, here, I'm going to summon you in here. Let's go. Yep, that's very true. Um, so the LiDAR we've already talked about. I'm not going to recover that. The Stella we've already talked about. I'm not going to cover that. The Sarcophagus Dragon could tell you more about because I don't actually have that. It's really good for defending territory. So here's a, uh, just to show you guys, here's a picture of one that's 3.1 mil. Here's one that's 5.8 million, tier 9. Of course, he's also got that ISS jelly right here that's 10 million. 
which you all can't see because my, my, my pretty face is in the way. Um, let me move myself out of the way here. Get rid of myself for a second. Um, so he's got this uh, Centurion here that's 13 million. Oh my god. A, a Bortos that's 7 million. <laughs> that makes me cry. Like, I want to get my Bortos to 7 million. That'd be... That'd be like... I would literally cry. Oh, so he does have the Kelvin. There's the Kelvin right there. So... That's really cool. I really wish. That's a whale. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Adam in the alliance I'm in on on server fourteen. He's he's really good. Yeah, I met a person on a server seventeen that has spent so much money on this game that when somebody told me how much she spent, I was like. Oh, well, now, as much money as Scopely makes on this game, there's no way that anybody would buy it. I mean, a company would have to buy it. Well, I'm saying, that, that's what I'm saying. Supposedly, this woman on server, I believe, 17, spent $1 million. Yeah, I believe it. The company's worth more than that, though. They're a multi-billion dollar company. Well, I imagine, I mean... And I said Centurion. I meant Gladius, not Centurion. I'll take a small load of a million dollars to finance my game. <laughs> you imagine FTW's face if I did that? My God. Anyways, moving forward. Um, any of these faction ships right here, the D3, the Bortos, the, the Brel, D3, Cavort. No, actually, no, I'll take it back. The Cavort. Let me go back here and do this by a shipyard level here. Um, so, these three right here again, if you're going to get them, I recommend doing it through the hijacked. There's no, there's no difference between hijacked versus the faction other than the way it looks and the fact that it uses different resources to upgrade. Um, that's, that's really it. Um. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to waste, and, and I've, a lot of people learn this the hard way, but you don't want to waste faction credits getting these. Now, granted, I did <laughs> on my, on this server and the uh, the other one that I play on. I did waste faction credits and get the D3, but that's just because I wanted the D3. Uh, and, and with the Klingons, I don't plan on getting anything other than the Bortos and the Brel, which the Brel is what I'm working on right now. Um Beyond that, I don't plan on getting any other Klingon ships. I'm planning on switching back over to Federation and then maxing that out in a 10 mil and getting my uh, Enterprise. Um, and then doing Romulans and maxing them out at 10 mil. So I'll have all three of my factions across the board uh, at 10 mil, so I'll never have to worry about being attacked if I go mining um, in their space. Um, which means that uh, that's one less thing I have to worry about in the game. But yeah, the hijacked ships are literally the same exact same thing. They just look a little different. Personally, I think they look nicer. Um, like the hijacked legionary is red and, or orange instead of green. Um, and I think that looks a lot cooler, actually. Uh, the Mayflower is, again, more of an orangish kind of tint. It's got a different paint job. I think it looks cooler. Um... The D3 is kind of already orange and red, so this doesn't look too terribly different. Um, but same abilities, there's nothing, literally nothing different about them at all. Um, Stella we've already talked about. The Bortos, Saladin, and Centurion, all three of these ships are actually really good. Um, I personally am not a big fan of the Romulan ships, like, at all. Um, so... I, I prefer the Bortos or the Saladin. Um, Bortos is a really good station cracker since it is a battleship, um, specifically. 
battleships are going to be more unique uh, to cracking stations than any other ship, just simply because of the large amounts of health and armor that they have. So I recommend getting the Bortos as a station cracker. It's really its only weak point is the Saladin, um, which is you know obviously it's you know it's its counter. Um, but the answer to the Saladin is the next tier of ships, which is the Brel. And we'll come back to that in a second here. We'll touch base on these here real quick. So each of these are the faction mining ships. Uh, the Cavort being the uh, Klingons, Antares being the Federation, and the Valkus being the Romulans. Yeah, Romulans. Um, so of course they all correspond to their, you know, their factions mining. So the Antares is crystal. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. The Cavort is crystal. The Antares is gas, and the Valkus is uh, ore, of course. And they each get the 80% bonus, or 70%, whatever it is, 70% bonus towards, I can click on the right thing here, yeah, towards their particular uh, factions stuff. I personally don't recommend these ships. They're the exact same thing as the Horizon with a different paint job. I mean, you can see that looking at their pictures. Um... In my opinion, the Horizon is still a better ship than these, even with the bonuses, the boosts. The reason why is because these three ships require rare uh, resources to upgrade, which makes them more difficult to upgrade quickly. And not only that, but it wastes it, and you don't get to use them the rare resources on other ships like your Brel. Enterprise, other bigger ships that you want to use them on. So, when you can use a Horizon, tear it up, max it out almost, without barely using any rare resources at all, versus, you know, the Antares and these other two ships where they're literally using res rare resources right out the gate. Um, it just, for me, it really is not worth it. Um, I actually have an Antares. Um, I haven't done a whole lot with it. It's tier two. Um, I mean, you can see it doesn't really use rare right now at tier two for some of this stuff, and obviously the, some of these, you know, I've already leveled up and, and gone on with. But, um, ooh, a 10k one, hoo hoo. Um, but yeah, so I mean, once I level this up again it'll probably start using major rare resources and so it's just really not worth it in my opinion it's this is the gas miner um it really doesn't mine gas faster than my horizon um which might be because my horizon is a higher tier but all the same it just ships just doesn't seem really worth it to me um, It's really just in the grand scheme of things, it's really not worth it. And and they're really, they're not that different from the Horizon. I mean, you, the cargo capacity on them is really, it's the same ship. I mean, it's literally the same ship, it just looks a different color. Um, now, I will say the cargo capacity on these is, is a tiny bit higher. It's 14% higher for this ship. So, I mean, these are good for station rating. But look how much it, they're. It says three percent slower, but I just these ships feel so much slower. They feel very sluggish. Um, I think they're more meant for a deep space, but of course that's level thirty-nine. So yeah, you know, you still got a long ways to go to really worry about these ships. Yeah, yeah, you really do. Um, Going on to the next one here, maybe, there we go. All right, so the Brel, Intrepid, and the Gladius. Now, I said at the towards the beginning of the stream that I do not recommend the Intrepid. Um, I really don't, um, and to be honest, I really don't recommend the Gladius either. If you <laughs> look at the, the, the power levels between these just starting, the Gladius comes in at 535,000. 
the Intrepid at 581, and then the Burrell at 588. So I have to question why it is that the Burrell and the Intrepid are both in that 580 range, and the Gladius is down there sitting low at 535. I do have to kind of wonder. I mean, that's a pretty big difference for a starting ship. I mean, for one that's a level, you know, they're all level 32 ships. So I think that that kind of, and, and the, the Gladius is so boring looking. Like, look at this ship. It's literally, there's like nothing there to look at. And me personally, I like to look at my ships. I mean, I'm not saying I do anything to my ships. I'm just saying I like to look at them. They're, I like a pretty ship. And this is just a boring, flat, slate, emotionless, just hunk of metal that looks like a little bit of a U. Um, the Intrepid is at least a little prettier. Not too much, but kind of looks like a Stingray, actually. Um, the Brel, I really am in love with the, the Klingon ships, the way they look. Uh, they were actually designed by Leonard Nimoy, for those of you that did not know. Um, and it's designed, uh, these are actually supposed to be kind of like uh, shoulder plates, like pauldrons. Um, and this is supposed to be like a, a person flexing, so with the, the shoulder pauldrons. So for those of you that did not know that, just a little fun fact for you. Um, the Brel is what I'm working on getting right now on the other server. And uh, I, it's a, it's a Saladin killer. This is the answer to the Saladin. This is the best ship you can possibly have to fight the Saladin. Um, it's actually known as the Saladin Hunter, which is kind of funny. But the really nice thing about this ship is it actually, its ability is ship uh, cloaking system, which is really good for fighting hostiles. This includes armadas. The cloaking system does still work for armadas. Um, there are some reports that say it's, that it does not, um, unless they have changed that, I, I'm pretty sure that it still does. Um, I'll have to double check myself on that because they might have changed that. Um, but either way, 15% is still good against hostiles. Um, I don't plan on using this as a hostile hunter. I plan on simply using it as a scare tactic and as a ship for fighting Saladins because a lot of people get the Saladin and that's the, kind of their go-to ship. So I definitely am going to be using that for, for that specifically. Uh, the Intrepid I don't recommend at all. I have I don't personally have one. I have heard a ton of bad about it. Um, I've heard that it's not good against other players. It's mediocre against hostiles and just not to do it. Um, save your BPs for the Enterprise. And I've been told that by veteran players that have been playing this game since it came out and, and actually have the Intrepid. So I'm following their advice, and I'm staying far, far away from that. Um, you saw that Adam, the guy I showed a picture of before, he did have a Gladius. That was pretty pretty powerful, pretty big and up there. Um, you can see this 35% weapon damage against hostiles. So this is a good hostile hunting ship, as boring as it looks. Um... I mean, if you want a good hostile hunting ship for PvE, then by all means. Now, uh, these are your level 34 faction ships, and this is where the story ends for me, basically, with the uh, ops center here. Um, of these ships, the Enterprise is the best. Um, there, there's just no way around that. The Enterprise is literally the best ship you run it with a morale crew, you will be unstoppable in PvP um, until you run into somebody that has a better crew. Um, and that's really going to be definitive with the Enterprise. Um, that's a really pretty ship. It's iconic. It's what got Star Trek started. I mean, you can find this, this ship in every single episode. And I say not this particular ship, but the Enterprise in general. You can find this in every single episode of Star Trek ever with the exception of Deep Space Nine and TNG. Or not TNG, um, Voyager, sorry. And even in, even in Deep Space Nine, the Enterprise is still in there periodically. Uh, Voyager, not so much. It's mentioned, it's brought up, it's referenced more than once, but you're not really going to see it too terribly often in Voyager. I think it's in there in a couple scenes. 
Um, but it's been in every single Star Trek. Um, it's just the most iconic ship that, that's in the entire series. Um, and it even says it right here. One <laughs> is one in line of iconic Constitution-class starships. Um, I will point out something, though. In the original series, um, this is actually identified as a battleship, um, not an explorer. The Enterprise was not classified as an explorer until TNG with the Galaxy class. This is a Constitution class. Constitution classes were warships. They were not designed for exploration. They were not designed for families. That's why this is such a skinny section of the ship versus in TNG where this is a huge section of the ship with a smaller star drive. Um, you notice the star drive is actually longer than the hull of the ship um, in this particular rendition of it. The Enterprise D... Um, yeah, the Enterprise D... I was trying to think of the C was like this as well, but it was not. The Enterprise D was actually the first Galaxy class um, Enterprise that was used for family transport as well as um, other galactic exploration, uh, transporting dignitaries, uh, doing peace treaties, things like that. Uh, this ship was used for engagements against the Klingons. That's what it was designed for. It's what it was built for. You notice the big difference between this ship and the Enterprise D. I can literally go on and on and on and on and on about the Enterprise. It is literally my favorite um, of every single ship. And I, I was going to get my little Enterprise model, but it's actually inside of my computer. Um, I have it on a stand inside of my computer. It's all lit up with blue Federation lighting. Um, I'm not going to lift my computer case up here and show you guys because that would be ridiculous. But if you want to see my computer, it is on my Discord, so you guys can check that out. I will put some uh, additional images on there uh, to update that for you guys. Um, but the Enterprise is, is hands down my favorite ship. I really love the design of it um, and all the models. Uh, this is not my favorite, but I, I do like the way that it's built. I think it looks really cool. Um, just a really awesome ship. I could go on about it all night. But anyways, um, really good ship. Must have for your build collection. The D3, as I pointed out, Klingons, hull breach. Um, it's an iconic ship, I guess. It kind of reminds me of a cicada with the way it's shaped. Uh, kind of a bat as well. I guess, actually. A bat and a cicada. Kind of has the body of a cicada and the, the wings of a bat. Um, I don't know. I, I really This is one of the ships I don't really care for how it looks. It's like an upgraded version of the D3. Just looks kind of funky. I'm sure it's a good ship. I don't really know much about it. I haven't seen too many of those in combat. Um, I have seen one versus the Enterprise, and the Enterprise just epically destroyed it. Um, the Augur... It's just a really thick, heavy-looking ship. They are extremely slow, uh, but it's a battleship. And you notice, by the way, its ability? Burning. This is a really good ship for Nero's crew. Uh, Nero is a burning captain, and this is absolutely 100% phenomenal for him. Um, I also recommend Giorgio on this as well, because she has the additional um, burn. If you don't have her, she is an epic-level officer. Um one of the more recent ones to come out. Um, I've got her on my other account here, and I have a 60% chance of burning the opponent ship for two rounds, kind of like Captain Kirk's ability for the morale. And then um, her captain maneuver for me is at the start of each round, if the opponent is burning, then the captain um, decreases the attack of all officers on the opponent's ship by 100% for that round, um, which decreases damage, obviously. So she's another good one for this, even though she's a Federation captain. Um, but, yeah. And, of course, the ISS Jelly. You know, this ship is real, really... The only reason you would even need to have this ship is just to say that you have it. Um, it this ship just has such a long repair time, and it has so much uh, cost 
to repairing it and upgrading it, it's not even really worth it to have it and upgrade it. It's literally just eye candy for you to fly around with and say, oh, look, I have this ship. Um, other than that, it's really not worth it. Um, oh, and it's ops locked as well, just like the sarcophagus is. So you, you, you level it up as you level up your station and your, your, yourself, basically. Um, so it's really... If you want to get it, it's cool to get it, and that's nice to have it, I guess, but it's just not... If you're actually wanting to get it to use it on a consistent and regular basis, I don't think that it's worth it, personally. Um, but I have been streaming for two hours and 20 minutes now. There's still a couple other um, things on here, but I'm not going to actually talk about those tonight because it's already... 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I do have to get a little bit of sleep. So I'm going to scratch these out that I covered tonight. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over the next ones on the next time I do a stream on Star Trek, which will probably be next Friday. Um, so I do appreciate everybody watching tonight's stream. And I do hope to catch you all later. I am going to be putting this on uh, YouTube. So... Um, if you guys want to, uh, well, I just made my camera a whole lot bigger, make my face populate here for you guys. Um, if you're wanting to see more of this or you liked uh, tonight's information, well, I know it was a lot of information um, that will be available on YouTube, so you guys can kind of pause, take notes, you know, fast forward, rewind, do what you need to do um, to get the information. If you guys have any questions, want to see additional information featured on the stream. Uh, my Discord is linked here below on my uh, Twitch profile, so you guys can find that in the About Me section. Um, also, um, if you're not already following, go ahead and follow. I appreciate any follow supports. But more than that, actually, I do sincerely appreciate any subscriptions. Subscriptions actually helps to finance my stream, helps to put a little money um, towards the stream, and uh, that way I can kind of funnel that into this to help give me a little bit more uh, to work with here as far as content and things like that. Um, also, donations. Uh, donations goes directly to my PayPal account, so that way you don't actually have to have that money go through Twitch and then to me, uh, because they only do those in payouts. So uh, any donations you make through the PayPal account goes directly into my uh, bank account. So you're able to do that as well. Um, of course, we also have the merchandising. Um, that I have attached here as well to my profile. So if you guys scroll down a little bit more, click on that Birch tab, you'll see some pretty cool stuff in there. I am going to be adding stuff. If there's something you'd like to see added in there, um, drop me a message in Discord. I'm pretty much on there 24-7 under Viking Heritage. And you can actually send me uh, requests for different stuff in there. I'll be adding a section on my Discord for that actually specifically if you guys want to see something. Um, Every time you purchase something from the merchandising store, I do get a little bit of money from that. So that actually goes, again, directly into my uh, my bank account. So I can actually, you again, use that money to help support the stream a little more and uh, put it back into the stream as well. So, But, uh, again, I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Check out the YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.